Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Now, you've got your RD8, you've got your MS-101, you're about to have the most amazing acid rave party of your life, and all you need to know is how do you get the two to run together? You've got your sequence, and you've got your pattern. You could use tap tempo, of course, Oh, that's fairly close. But there's a better way of doing it. You can sync the two. There's two methods of syncing it. One's analog clock, the other one is MIDI clock. And so this is a very quick video just to show you how to get those two things working. And if you saw my previous video on this, you'll know that I completely stuffed it up. And I'd like to, to thank all of you out there who pointed out the schoolboy errors that I was making with my MIDI clock demonstration, or lack thereof. And so with this one, with this do-over, I think I've got it right. But if I haven't, please let me know in the comments and we can all have a bit of a learning experience. The best and easiest way to do this is with a patch cable using analog clock. It's using clock out from the RD8 to clock the MS-101. All you need is a patch cable, it's just a mini jack cable goes into the back, clock out on the RD8 to external clock in on the MS-101. The MS-101 doesn't have a clock out, so you can only do it this way around. Now if I put the MS-101 into play, it'll sit there waiting for a clock. Hit play on the RD8 and the two will run beautifully together. Yeah, not quite. Not quite because the RD8 by default is set up to kick out 24 pulses per quarter note. That means every quarter note has 24 pulses racketing out the back here, straight into the MS-101 that's going, oh my god, oh my god, doesn't quite know what to do. What it does, it clocks to 24 pulses per quarter note, and so is going like the clappers. So we need to calm that down a little bit. You do that by going to settings, clock, Press the tap hold button to get to analog clock and then use the data wheel to turn that down to something a bit more sensible like one pulse for instance and then see how that sounds. Maybe two. Or maybe four is more your thing. You're then in full control of the tempo. Now the MS-101 doesn't have any form of clock division in, at least as far as I can see. So turning the tempo here will have no effect. It can only be driven by the clock that's coming out of the RD8. The analog clocking is simple, it's easy, it's just a cable and works really, really well. You can, of course, clock it from other places. If you've got other gear that generates a clock, you can stuff that into both of them independently. Simple, easy, versatile, job done. Second option is to use a MIDI cable. First of all, from the RD8 to the MS-101, if you go to the back, plug this into MIDI out. Plug the other end into MIDI in on the MS-101, and off you go. Except there's something odd going on because the sequence has changed. It wasn't that sequence. It was something else. Now change again. And again. I 
I mean, it's interesting it's changed it to a, a more interesting sequence than what I'd programmed in, but the point is that MIDI from the RD8 is affecting the MS-101 because they've both got MIDI, they've both got MIDI implemented, and so this throws MIDI out, this accepts MIDI. So while this connection for synchronization is awesome, you've also got this other MIDI information to contend with. So how do we get around that? Well, the reason that this is happening is because the MIDI out on the RD8 is set to the same channel as the MS-101 by default. So we can sort that out by going to settings, MIDI, MIDI in, press this once to get to MIDI out, see that's set to channel one. You turn this to channel 10, which is more usually what drums find themselves on, then this is kicking out on MIDI channel 10, this is set by default to MIDI channel 1, they're not going to interfere with each other, but the MIDI clock will keep on going. So it now shouldn't change the sequence. However, our sequence is still a bit weird. So if we unplug MIDI for a second, see if we can get our sequence back. There we go. One added bonus of the MIDI connection is that you do have a little bit of clock division with the tempo knob. So at the fully clockwise position, it's as we expect it to be, but if you bring it back to about three o'clock, it then cuts that tempo down a long way and further and further. Exactly if that's doing that by design or not, I don't have any idea, but it seems to do something or other. You can also do this the other way around, so use the MS-101 as the master and this as the slave, but I've found that's not worked quite so well, but let's show you anyhow. So you change the MIDI out here. So this is now sending the MIDI out, set to MIDI in. On the RD8, you need to set the synchronization, which is here, to MIDI. And then on the MS-101, you want to enable MIDI clock. Now you do that in the little synthesizer app from Behringer, which is this, this fella here. And you download this from the Behringer site, connect the MS-101 via USB, and you go to MIDI clock out on the general settings, enable then this will send MIDI clock. So as I turn the tempo knob here, you can see that it's responding on the RD8, so you know that it's getting the information. Now you can hear some drum sounds in there. This isn't actually playing. What you're getting is the MS-101 sequencer playing notes in the RD8. Again, it's because of the MIDI settings. This is kicking out on MIDI channel one. If we go to settings, MIDI, MIDI in is set to all. So you don't want that. You want to set that down to, to 10 again because that's the percussion channel. There we go. It's no longer playing the sounds in the RD8. But it's also, it hasn't started the RD8. Now I'm not entirely sure why this is. I would have expected by pressing play on the MS-101 that that would have sent a MIDI start message out and the rhythm designer would have picked that up and would have started. But it doesn't appear to. It's certainly in sync and ready, but I have to start it independently. Similarly with stop. Even if it's in pause, I thought that might be it. No. 
So all in all, it's probably better to have the RD8 as the master, as far as MIDI sync is concerned. Although it can work both ways, it's just smarter if it comes from the RD8 into here. Obviously you can sync from a door, you can sync from elsewhere, you can sync in a, in a hundred different ways in getting MIDI information to it, or analog clock to it. But in terms of a simple acid party setup of these two devices, use your analog clock, that's the simplest way, or use MIDI coming from the RD8 to the MS-101. And that will do the job. I hope that was helpful, and in the meantime, go make some tunes.